play eye back in half of Division One schools. He could have played tailback. But because he had the total package from, from everything, scholastically, his future goals, he found that Annapolis or the Naval Academy would be a great place for him to go. That's a great benefit for Navy. They've got a great quarterback. You, you use the keyword angles. Offensive line are working angles. Backs are working angles. Receivers are working angles when they crack and block on kids. They're looking for the head placement on the right shoulder, if you will. And if they can get the right angle, it doesn't matter if you're not as big and strong and fast. If you've got your body in the perfect spot, you can find a seam. And if your secondary players and linebackers don't get off of their block and don't defeat that angle, you get really big plays. You get gashed, and then you get that for four quarters. You get it from the one-yard line. If they have 99-yard drives, you get it the entire length of the field for four quarters. Execution is perfect out of those guys. They just, they, they're well coached. Because it's so simple, you just practice the repetition of the same thing over and over. You're not teaching new, common, new uh, tactics, new, new game plans every week. It's the same thing. You mentioned Ricky Dobbs, their quarterback. He is the guy who pilots that offense. But the other thing that makes it go is that offensive line. They're not that big. They're 275 on average across the front. But this is the game that defensive linemen hate to play. And this is the reason I brought up the defensive line earlier. These guys will cut block all day long. Explain, well, first of all, explain the difference between the legal cut block and the illegal chop block because they look very similar. But then also, how does the defensive line compensate for that and walk away from this game with two healthy knees? That's going to be tough because they're all such tall players. They're going to have to play with leverage and stay down. It's easier said than done. 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, type players. Especially Marcus hadn't seen an option probably. Doesn't have any idea what a cut block is. Or he's learning quickly, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, a legal and illegal chop block. If a player, a legal chop block, if you will, is when a player takes your knees out, basically. They're going to cut, right. you know, a cut block, chop, whatever you want to call it, they take your knees out. It's a one offensive lineman on a one defensive player. A, a chop block can come from a receiver, tight end, anywhere on the field. That's a, anything that you get the player down, you go at his knees. Clean, legal hit. Illegal chop block is when that same chop action is taking place. Somebody's going at their legs, but they're engaged with somebody up top. So if I'm Marcus Hunt and you're blocking me up top and mm-hmm. I'm winning, yet I eliminate somebody comes and chops my knees that's illegal because i'm engaged it's a high low basically is what they call it a high low chop and you could really cripple a guy that way oh you could tear you can end his football career that way that's that's why they've instituted such a serious penalty 15 yards uh that's gonna be tough for smu this week and, and not to make light they're if you haven't practiced it ever in your career let alone this season it's a, it's a quick turnaround to go from tulsa who spreads it out all over the field to a triple option, getting off cut blocks. I know high school teams, and, and even at SMU, Rice still ran the triple option. Mm-hmm. Teams go, if it, you get into the practice mode, you're wearing shorts and shoulder pads, you're getting into a good rhythm, you're staying off of each other's legs because you're, you know, you're trying to reach the pinnacle of Saturday is when the game is for your health and your legs to be there. You kind of have to go back to full pads, and you have to hit, and you have to practice shedding chop blocks. A lot, it's, a, it's another week of work you have to get back and, and kind of get back to your basics on. Yeah, the defensive linemen have been wearing knee braces in practice all week. And, get ready. They're going to need and them. And they're going to have to on Saturday, they're right? They're going to have guys, you know, at their feet all day. Marcus may get really frustrated. For, for, for defensive linemen that haven't seen an option, you can get frustrated, and that's what Navy really wants you to do. If you can get one player frustrated, get him off of his assignment, you can hit it. You can hit a seam and go 75 on it. You mentioned Ricky Dobbs has the ability. He could play running back in a lot of systems in the country. He's not only a very gifted runner, he's got to be one of the toughest guys that SMU is going to see all year. Last year against SMU, he gets hurt, sits out one week, and then played six games running an option offense with a cracked kneecap. His numbers are down a little bit this year, but what does this guy do? What makes this guy go? He's not a 4-2 sprinter, but he's very tough, very smart. How is he as effective as really any option quarterback that we've seen in a long time? Well, he's 21, 22 years old, and he's had a stated goal since he was like 10 that he wants to be a president yeah. in, in 2030, 2040, whatever the number adds up to being. The, the entire campus, uh, the entire academy up there has is full of the most stand-up kid from your high school class. Think of the, the three or four, mo- you know, just great, Coaches could rely on, you know, coaches' dreams, if you will. They show up every day. They work hard. You know what you're going to get out of them. Off the field, they're great. High-character kids. He's that guy. He's just surrounded by a ton of them. And I think when you're, when you're in a big group of those kids, 
you know, obviously somebody is going to rise to that top. Ricky Dobbs is that guy. He's just in an environment, you know, ideal for, for what he is. He's just a good kid, and, and that's the entire Navy camp. Their offensive line, 270-pound average, you said. I mean, it's hard to get 315-pound mean kids that will throw you on your back and then turn around and, and make 6 a.m. study hall and 7 a.m. breakfast and 8 a.m. engineering class and 9 a.m. economics. It's just it's a, it's a rare breed. It's a special person to go play at the Naval Academy. I think Ricky Dobbs embodies that to a T. they got a lot of guys, obviously, who run the ball. But is the key in your mind still get the ball out of Dobbs' hands at yeah. all costs? Tackle the guy with the ball. I mean, it's, 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 you simplify it. You tackle the player with the football. And, and you've got to run your keys. You've got your d- defense. You know, you've got the belly, the fullback give. You've got the quarterback. And then you've got the pitch man. Three. One, two, three. Down that line. Checklist. Same time. Every, the same way. All game long. You want Ricky Dobbs, you want to make him pitch it, but more importantly, if he does it, tackle him after one or two-yard gain. You can't let him rip off six, seven yards every first down. It'll, that's what happened a couple years ago. SMU on skates going backwards the entire game defensively, and they didn't have to attempt a pass a couple right. years ago. Right. They ran one pass play. Ricky Dobbs pulled it down and, and ran because he could. I mean, it, you've got a lot of work to do in, in a short amount of time to get ready for these guys, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't envy the defensive staff for having to, to get these guys ready to go because you get Ricky Dobbs tackled, he makes a great pitch as he's going down. Somebody's got to beat that block and be in position to tackle a running back, which I think this week will be easier to do to tackle the running backs than the quarterback. You talk about the Navy offense, but their defense has been fairly effective too. They're only giving up 16 points a game, um, so they're not pitching shutouts, but they're also not getting blown out by anybody. Same sort of deal on defense that they have on offense. Their defensive front averages about 250 across the front. And when you look at guys like JT Brooks and Kelly Turner and Bryce Tennyson, normally they would look at a defensive line that size and sort of lick their chops a little bit. How does Navy's defense compensate for not being the biggest, bulkiest guys up front? A lot of good effort, obviously. I think if you put on the tape, you'd see that from the first kick to the very last whistle. These dudes get after you hard. They play really, really hard. Really, they, they love football. Football is their outlet. You know, that's that's where they go and just nonstop love it. Persistent, persevere. You're never gonna get me down. That's tough. Ask anybody that's played football against a guy that never quits, ever. It's tough. Justin Rogers was a 205-pound defensive end as a redshirt freshman. Mm-hmm. He was the toughest player I blocked for four years. It, because his effort was so great from the first week of the season all the way through the end. He was redshirting. He had no reason to make play, but he was, his effort was great. Justin Rogers ended up, everybody knows the story of Justin Rogers, makes a good little NFL career for himself. Navy doesn't quite have those guys that have Justin's upside, but they've got that same kind of love and passion for football. So they use angles, they use stunts, they use twists, they bring pressure, and they're just fundamentally perfect. And I don't want to overrate Navy, but they just do the thing. They maximize their athletic ability. They maximize their scheme. And they know that they'll channel for, for 60 minutes on Saturday to do exactly as their coach to do. No false steps, no penalties, no silly play. Very disciplined, organized football. They're also very opportunistic on defense. They've gotten three interceptions, but they've also forced 10 fumbles and recovered seven of them. Because of that, do you expect SMU to be, you know, they've gotten a little more vertical with their passing game the last couple of weeks, but do you expect SMU to be more conservative, do more short and intermediate passes, and run the ball more with Zach Line this week to try to eliminate the chances of, of uh, you know, big plays by the Navy defense? Well, I think Navy's going to play a lot of zone coverage. They're going to mm-hmm. drop players back. They're not going to let the vertical route beat them this week. So with that, they're going to make SMU march down the field just by virtue of how they're going to align and make SMU march with, with heady, consistent play. SMU as a team has hit big plays. They haven't maybe played as consistent from start to finish, but they've hit big, they've hit big plays, and that's put them out in front. Navy's not going to give you that. Navy's going to make you go up and down the field. That could be a challenge for SMU. They're going to have to get it back to the basic. Take what's there. Kyle's going to have to be pretty sure of himself and his reads, but surprisingly, Navy will, if they sit back in all that zone and they make your quarterback think and they make him read and make him check the field, 
Next thing you know, randomly a linebacker or a defensive end wins, you know, that back to that whole just keep fighting through the end of the play. They they defeat a block and next thing you know they strip a quarterback and they've got a short field and they go punch it in. So you just have to be uh, very sound up front and know that you're not going to hit big plays and put this team away. And even if you do hit big plays, they're not going to quit. They're going to keep coming. SMU had a lead on them last year at the half, ended up losing the game by, by a field goal. I think we set it up in the booth that they left the touchdown on the field. Mm -hmm. No lead was too comfortable with these guys. And it makes it's kind of confusing because Navy is, is a big play group, if you will. If all they need is one misstep out of a linebacker, boom, they'll hit you for 75 yards and they're back in the game. SMU's going to have their hands full of just staying consistent all week, all game. We'll see how this shakes out on Saturday. It is, a very, it is going to be an emotional game. Uh, it's not a conference game for the Mustangs, but this is the game where they're playing for the Frank Gans Trophy. And uh, you know that June Jones and his staff and the rest of the team obviously have very strong feelings about Coach Gans. Um, if you're not making the trip to Annapolis, check out the game either on 1310 AM, the ticket, or on CBS College. Kickoff is at 2.30 p.m. I Central Time. SMUMustangs.com as well. Can't you listen from that? Uh, yeah, I think so. On all access on SMUMustangs.com. Um, for John Hampton, this is the PonyFans.com Scouting Report.